In this video, I want to talk about the sum and product of rational and irrational numbers. So we're going to do different combinations. For example, if I take a rational plus rational, what would I get? Rational plus irrational, what would I get? Irrational plus irrational is equal to what, etc., etc. So let's start with the easier ones. One of the first, the easiest one is rational plus rational. Rational plus rational is always equal to rational. Here's a rational number 5 plus another rational number 6. That gives us 11, which is also rational. And bear in mind that they are rational because they are natural numbers, integers, etc. They are on that side. Or they can also be written as fractions with integer values. So they are rational. Negative 8 is an integer. It's also rational. When you add negative 8 and negative 3, remember the rule is if the signs are the same, add the numbers together. So we get 11 and we keep the negative sign they have. Again, rational plus rational gives me um, rational. Even if it's a fraction that we're adding, when we add fractions together like two-thirds plus one-thirds gives us three-thirds, which is also another fraction, which is the same as one, by the way. So rational plus rational always gives us a rational answer. What if we now do a rational plus an irrational number? What will that give us? This always gives us an irrational number. Here's an example. If I take the number 5 and I add um, the square root of 2, the square root of 2 is something like 1.4142135622. So if I add a 5 to that value, what would I get? You know, 5 is going to be fitting all of those zeros, right? So my answer now becomes 6.4142135622, on and on. So I still get an irrational number. There is no order, there is no pattern in its repetition, and it goes on forever. So rational plus irrational is also still irrational. If I add 0, which is rational, to the square root of 2, that still gives me an irrational number. So 0, filling all the spaces... And then I'm going to add the square root of 2, which is 1.4142135622. That just gives me 1.4142135622. So rational plus irrational is always equal to irrational. Let's go to the next set. What if I added two irrational numbers now? So I have an irrational number, and I'm adding another irrational number. For example, square root of 5 plus the square root of 3. Yeah, you're going to get an irrational number for your answer. So in this case, I have an irrational number for my answer. And you can check those on your calculator. So irrational plus irrational in this case gives me irrational. And most times, irrational plus irrational will be irrational. However... There are a few times when you will get a rational number. A few times. When does this happen? This happens when you add a number and its opposite. When you add an irrational number and its opposite. For example, if I add positive square root of 2, which is irrational, and the negative square root of 2, which is irrational, a positive and a negative amount of the same value is equal to 0. So, whereas this was irrational and this was irrational, when I combine them together, I get zero, which is a rational number. So, the only time when irrational plus irrational is not irrational is when you add the opposite of a number. Here's pi. If you add a negative pi, a positive pi and a negative pi cancels each other out, so you have zero. Again, this is when an irrational plus an irrational gives you rational and so that's the only exception but generally irrational plus irrational equals irrational so pay attention to that so that takes care of all the additions let's go to the products or the multiplication
if you multiply rational times rational, what can you expect to get? All these rational examples. 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 3 times 4 is negative 12. Fraction. Numerator times numerator gives me 2. Denominator times denominator gives me 10, which I can simplify to 1 fifth. But rational times rational still gives me a fraction, which is also rational. And that's always true. Rational times rational is always equal to rational. What happens when I do rational times irrational? Most times you're going to get any rational numbers. Most times you will get any rational. There are a few times when the answer is going to be different. So let's take confirm this. If I take the square root of 2, which again is something like 1.41, etc. and we multiply by 5, we're still also going to get a answer, a decimal, that does not repeat and does not stop. So it is irrational. So if you multiply irrational times rational, you'll get an irrational number. When, does not, when do we have a different answer? When does it become rational? When we multiply by 0. So if you have an irrational number like square root of 5, which is not a perfect square, and you multiply by 0, then this is the time when you get another rational number. So we have rational, we multiply by irrational, this time we're going to get rational. And that only works when you're multiplying irrational times 0, you will always get a rational number. The last combination is irrational times irrational. Most times you will get an irrational number. For example, square root of 5 times square root of 10, sorry, square root of 2 is going to give you square root of 10, which is still also irrational. Square root of 7 times the square root of 3 gives us the square root of 21, which is not a perfect square and is still an irrational number. The only time, however, when you do irrational times irrational and get rational is when you multiply the number by itself or you multiply it times its reciprocal. For example, if I multiply the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, that gives me the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So in this case, it was irrational times irrational, but my, my product has a value that is rational. So when I multiply a square root by itself, I always get a rational number. Check this one out. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 gives me the square root of 25, which is a perfect square. And hence, I get that's equal to 5, which is always rational. So if you take any square root, which is irrational, irrational and you square it, you're getting perfect squares, which makes them now rational numbers. If you multiply an irrational number by its reciprocal, you're going to get a product of 1, because any number times its reciprocal gives you 1. So if I take square root of 2, which is irrational, and I multiply by 1 divided by the square root of 2, which is also irrational, what am I going to get? Square root of 2 times 1 is equal to square root of 2 in the numerator. 1 times the square root of 2 is equal to square root of 2 in the denominator. And when you divide a number by itself, it's equal to 1. So in this case, irrational times irrational gives me a rational number. So let's summarize this. When you multiply an irrational times irrational, most times you will get another irrational number. The exceptions to that are when you multiply the irrational number times itself, or when you multiply the irrational number times the reciprocal of the value, you would get an answer that's equal to 1. Hope this helps you in figuring out what happens when you find the sum or the product of rational and irrational numbers.